Most of us think of Google as a search engine, but it's also an ad agency. Hi there, I'm Jeremy Clark, a professor at the Concordia Institute for Information Systems Engineering. Today, we're going to demystify internet cookies. So all of you have certainly heard about the delicious types of cookies, and most of you have heard about internet cookies. To help understand this concept, I'm going to tell you a little story about Alice. So let's say that Alice gets a brand new tablet. She opens a box, turns it on for the very first time. At this point, she's completely anonymous. She decides she wants to go and find some boots to buy. So she goes over to Google, and at this point, a cookie's born. Think of a cookie as a serial number that websites assign to their users to track them around their platform. As Alice looks through her search results, she notices a pair of boots from her favorite shoe store and clicks on the link. By default, a cookie from one website can't follow you onto another website. However, Alice's favorite shoe company, like most of the top million websites, has a business relationship with Google. This allows Google's cookie to follow Alice through the virtual doors of the shoe store, like a little digital stalker. Alice gets bored of looking for boots, so she decides to go over to a message board to chat about her favorite show, Black Mirror. On the message board, she sees an ad for the exact boots she was just looking at. So what's going on here? Most of us think of Google as a search engine, but it's also an ad agency. The chat room in this case has outsourced its ads to Google. And because Google has a cookie that followed Alice from the search page to the shoe site and now to the message board, it knows exactly what ads it can serve to Alice that she's likely to click on. Using cookies in this way is prevalent on the modern web. Of the million most popular websites, Google can trace you across about 50 to 80% of them, while Facebook can track you across a third. Now, all of this may sound very scary. You should know that cookies are primarily used for advertising. However, there are more nefarious uses. For example, websites have started selling digital dossiers to political campaigns for micro-targeting. Now, you may be wondering what you can do to stop this. The truth is, it's pretty much impossible to live a cookie-free existence, as cookies also serve practical functions that make the web easier to use. However, there are some small tweaks you can make to your browser settings to help protect your privacy. First, you should disable third-party cookies. Second, you should enable Do Not Track, which prevents companies that are compliant with Canadian law from using cookies to trace you. The third thing you might use is private browsing mode, which gives you a fresh identity, sort of like when Alice turned on her new tablet for the first time. This is why digital privacy is such an important issue moving forward. And that's how the cookie crumbles.